We had almost 20,000 people show up. They came with, there were no speeches, there were no protests, there were no acts of violence. People came out and really came together as community, and it was phenomenal. It was a phenomenal evening. Lasted for about an hour, and then it was over, and people dispersed, and people to this day talk about it. Really what happened is actually uh, another artist friend of mine had done a project called the Citizenship Memorial that was uh, a, a conceptual piece in a certain way about the war in Iraq. And in this piece, he basically had the 72 front pages of the San Francisco Chronicle that highlighted the war until it became, he went to the back page or the second page after day 72. And he put it under the reflection of an American flag and his whole point with this piece was that it was about accountability. And I looked at my life and said, you know, I want to be accountable about issues that are really important to me. And this was not about the war and it was not about the president. It was about a lot of things that for whatever sets of reasons around the world, the United States is embroiled with conflict. More so than almost any other time I can remember that across the board on all continents, we as citizens are embroiled in conflict. And very, very little was out there in terms of proposed resolutions or diplomatic solutions to these. I mean, realistic diplomatic solutions to these. And so I thought about it and I thought, what can I do as an artist? I mean, I have, you know, limited resources and, you know, certain things that I can and cannot do. But I thought what I can do is bring community together. And I thought, what is the best way to do it so that we're not creating a, uh, an anti-war, anti-Bush thing because it doesn't work. I really wanted to focus on my origins as a Quaker and bring community together so that everybody that came to this project were bringing themselves to it versus saying, this is what you're going to hear. You can either like it or not like it. But I wanted them to come and bring, the whole project was about them. In the, in the intervening year, I think the discussions that I've had with people is that what Nightlight represents is something that doesn't happen very often. And I'm not, this is not taking credit for it. It's unfortunate that to offer a community of people the ability to have their own voice without determining or judging anything about it, not even setting the framework for it, but just saying in the broadest possible ways, bring your ideology, your opinion to this, is so powerful in a world that we live in where everything's dictated by TV, the press, whatever it may be, and I'm not anti-press or anti-television, but it's a world that the framework for discussion is always framed by somebody else. And so I use the lights as a metaphor to bring people together, which it always has historically, through campfires, through candlelight vigils, all those things that for thousands and thousands of years people have come together in this sense of communion. And that was really the origin, was, was being accountable, doing what I can do as an artist, and using the lights in my facilities through that project to bring this community together. We're all loaded up. Okay. Tell us what to do? I will. Awesome. Leading up to the event was very stressful and very um, hard because of the logistics. Uh, you want to get there about about 640. 640? Six, yeah. You sure? I hadn't slept, I mean, I hadn't slept well in probably five months. Or whatever Kirby Maybe says. Maybe a little early. <laughs> because I had this whole checklist of things I was going through. Positioning the light is critical. I would wake up probably 20 or 30 times a night. This is the way they lay. Every night. Okay. I mean, I had to do everything from call the FAA, mm. Homeland Security, everything to make sure that they didn't think the United States was being attacked. As we're getting close to 9 o'clock. But those were some of my more now. nervous phone calls because any one of them could have really shut me down. Um, but honestly, uh, it was weird. I mean, it, everything moves so smoothly. I think, but that's a different group. I think we're not taking It took me a year to prepare for this because of the logistics and permits and on and on the list goes. But um, I always had in the back of my mind, once I had developed the idea, I really had an act of faith that what I was pursuing was the right thing. And the thing that I, re that I really believed in always was, again, I, I can't reinforce this enough, I wasn't trying to dictate to anybody uh, what peace is about. This was about other people coming and bringing their sensibilities, their ideology, you know, not anything that I put a framework on. The only thing I said, this is one hour for peace. I'm bringing out these 500 lights. I'm going to put them out on West Cliff. You don't have to do that. All I ask you to do is show up and turn them on. They're going to rock, but I don't think they're going to roll.
Fun. <laughs> Where on West Cliff am I going? Everybody has a vest, grab a light. Nightlight really stands in my head as probably one of the most powerful things that ever really took place in my life. It's kind of like jumping out of an airplane for the first time with a parachute. There's this act of faith. Actually, let's go a little further. And one of the things that's really powerful, and I really, I've got to say, my life has been changed as a result of this project. You know, when you trust people, I mean, really trust them to do the right thing, you'll be blown away by what they do. That's what happened at Nightlight. You trust them to come to bring the really the good stuff, the good juices, and that's what people brought. But by asking people to come and have a voice, I think is A number one, and how you ask them to do that. Like a campfire, when people get around a campfire, people behave very differently. It's always been interesting to me. Sometimes a guitar comes out, sometimes somebody says something, but somehow by people just knowing that they're surrounded by other people, but the light becomes this, this conduit or this focus, is really what nightlight was, and so it's been interesting to me. Sometimes a guitar comes out, sometimes somebody says something, but somehow by people just knowing that they're surrounded by other people, but the light becomes this, this conduit or this focus, is really what nightlight was. And so I was really amazed, and I, I shouldn't say I was amazed, but I was, by trusting people to come out and do that, by not dictating to them that there is anything more important than just being together with inside the light, they took on the entire course of the events of that evening, which was very human. And the power of that humanity was everything. That was the project. What's going on, man? Oh, we're doing a little light project. So Nightlight is really very much along the linear track of utilizing light in the middle of the night for a way to bring people together. You know, lighthouses, believe it or not, are this great, I mean, lighthouses are revered in this country because they represent this light in the night, you know, or this, this thing that shows light in darkness, which is what we're all looking for. We're all looking for light. I mean, so there's so many metaphors you can use for it, but it's been around for tens of thousands of years. Leading up to it, it's a little bit like childbirth. You know, you never know what's going to happen. These moments, these last moments before the child finally comes out. Um, I was, I was panicked. Do you have lights with you? As a logistical person that night, laying out the lights. How could I have run out of lights? It's not human impossible. And at nine o'clock, um, everybody was using their cell phones so that everybody would be on the network to turn on the lights. I was walking up Westcliff, thinking it was going to be a disaster, and somehow in the last 15 minutes. Thousands of people had filled in. Every light was manned by more than two or three people. All the lights went on at once. I remember walking up West Cliff towards the lighthouse, and it was as if it was in slow motion. I mean, it was like the minute that happened, the, what, the first knee-jerk reaction I had, this is no longer my project, which was always the point. It was their project. All these people, I didn't see any faces that I recognized. It was just this mass, the sea of people under this light. And I remember walking very specifically intentionally up to the lighthouse and just seeing in slow motion all of these people and all of these cars and all of this kind of quiet discussion. And the first thing that came to my mind was my mother, who passed away in 1995 and was an instrumental part of my upbringing as an artist and as a Quaker. And I thought, this is a tribute to, to her, you know. She helped me figure this out and then helped me figure it out to be generous enough to give it to other people. And once it was given to other people, and I walked up and down Westcliff for the next half an hour, I just saw it in people's faces. This was bigger than all of us. You know, it was just this thing. There was no, I don't know how to explain it. It was just this peaceful, quiet, bucolic moment with people. And it's just the, it was the magic of that moment where it was me worrying about the project and then the project took its own life. And it was phenomenal. In the intervening year, I mean, I've been working really diligently to figure out how to do it again. We want to make it an annual. I met last.